It's no great mystery how Gary Kershaw became interested in auto racing. As a boy, he lived near the old Langford Oval, which was paved and reopened after the war ended. All the boys had their favorite driver, and when Gary was just 10, he got to do a lap around the track with his hero, Digger Caldwell, in car number one. In high school, he played ball for Belmont before beginning a trucking career by driving a gravel truck when he was 17. He switched to logging trucks a year later and started with a bang when the too-low four-mile bridge removed the top log. After racing go-karts at Western Speedway in 1961, he raced the 1932 Ford stock car against veterans like Billy Foster and Dave Cooper. Gary finished sixth in that season's point standings and was named Rookie of the Year. The following season, he moved up to second place in the stock car point standings and also began driving in the new fancy and faster modified car events. In his number 88 car, built and owned by Digger Caldwell, Gary won the first heat in the main event on opening night. Late in that 1963 season, he recorded a double victory night, taking first place in both the stock and modified 25-lap main events. Gary returned to stock car racing in 1965, opening the season with a spectacular five-flip roll in Frank Dyer's number 21 jalopy in the trophy dash. After demolishing that car, he drove his 1950s Ford to fifth place in the season's final standings. He raced with the Victoria Auto Racing Association through 1967 and 68, driving a 1955 Chev stock car to an impressive nine wins in 15 main events. Gary and builder Norm Wilcox ended the year as the 1968 points champion and also took home seven other major awards. As top driver at Western, what more could a guy do? In 1969, Gary had decided to retire from racing, but was approached to drive in the Superstock circuit. He teamed up with the crew of Harvey Chipper and Dave Smith in Rich Graham's car, and together they became one of the most competitive combinations on the Pacific Northwest NASCAR circuit. During their first Superstock season, they earned the number one spot, winning six out of the eight main events in B.C., Washington, and Oregon. They became the first Canadian entry to compete in the Riverside Permatex 200. There were 99 Americans and one unknown Canadian vying for the 44 starting spots. Driving a 1965 Camaro, Gary averaged 98.4 miles per hour to qualify in 16th position. After completing 40 laps in the prestigious race, Kershaw was forced to the pit area with a loose bumper. But that stop turned into an inferno when a cutting torch ignited some spilled fuel. At the start of the 1970 season, they were back at it, winning the Apple Cup race in Yakima. That year also saw Gary set a new track time record at the Victoria Oval and win 10 of his 13 Pacific Northwest races. That season at Riverside, he was rated as a threat, not an unknown, and he lived up to the billing, qualifying in the number four pole position at 100.8 miles per hour. Gary held his position for most of the race and with just 17 laps left, he moved into the lead after the defending champion made a pit stop for fuel and blew his engine while screaming back onto the track. The first Canadian to ever win a major NASCAR event cruised to the checkered flag at 93.5 miles per hour to win the 1971 Permatex 200 by a wide margin. In March of 1971, Gary was named Victoria's Male Athlete of the Year at the annual Sports Celebrity Dinner. The largest crowds that Western Speedway had ever seen turned out to see him compete against Herschel McGriff in the new International Drivers Challenge Series. In Yakima, the Open Stocks events drew more than 100,000 fans and Gary was a popular winner. Mechanical problems plagued him in the 72 and 73 events, but he opened the 1974 season with a win and went on to make it seven in a row. Track managers began adding a $100 bounty each week, but it was 13 weeks before Herschel McGriff ended Gary's amazing win streak. Winning an impressive 21 Superstock class main events in a row through the 1973 to 75 seasons at Western Speedway, Gary was named the King. After 1975, Gary Kershaw raced in the few select international events, wrapped up his racing career driving a 1930 Ford Coupe with the Old Timers Racing Association. Local auto racing greats Billy Foster, Roy Smith and Dave Cooper have previously been inducted into the Greater Victoria Sports Hall of Fame. To that illustrious list, we now proudly add the first Canadian to win at Riverside and one of the winningest drivers Western Speedway has ever seen, Gary Kershaw.